At least 95 people have been killed and 163 injured in an attack on Afghanistan's capital, Kabul. In the latest, the Ministry of Interior Affairs has named the Haqqani Network as the perpetrator, even though the Taliban had already claimed responsibility. An ambulance laden with explosives was used to carry out the strike. It was driven past a police checkpoint and into a lane that's only accessible to government workers. The Indian Consulate, the European Union Office and the High Peace Council are all in the vicinity of the blast site. Embassies, the city's police headquarters and a popular shopping street make up the area of the blast. One that was buzzing with a busy weekend crowd when the explosion took place at about 12.15 p.m. local time. The injured have been rushed to hospitals. At least one official has described the attack as a massacre. Now, this attack comes just a week after the Taliban carried out an attack on the city's intercontinental hotel in which 22 people were killed in a 15-hour long siege. Earlier this month, on January 4th, an Islamic State suicide bomber attacked a supermarket in Kabul, killing at least 20 and injuring two dozen others. The United States has stepped up aid to Afghan security forces and increased airstrikes against the Taliban. The aim is to force the insurgents onto the negotiating table. However, the Taliban has dismissed suggestions that it has been weakened by this new strategy. And joining me this uh, evening to talk more about this attack is my colleague, Vion's West Asia correspondent, Daniele Pagani, who's joining us live from Amman in Jordan. Also with me is... Uh, an expert on uh, events in South Asia, Dr. Well Awad. Thank you both for joining us this evening, uh, gentlemen. Uh, Daniel, if I can come to you first. The choice of an ambulance, the choice of a street that is only open to government uh, workers, this is interesting and it uh, shows that these people think that they can act with impunity. Definitely, yes. Uh, and they actually can act uh, with impunity. More than impunity, I would say that they can freely move around uh, some very sensible areas in Kabul because we're not talking about a uh, neighborhood on the outskirts of Kabul. We are talking about the center of Kabul, uh, one and a half kilometer from the emergency hospital, very close to the former Ministry of Interior and very close uh, to a place where a few embassies uh, are located and consulates. So, yes, indeed, uh, this was a clever strategy. I'm sorry to say that, but this was a clever strategy that the Taliban applied choosing an ambulance and knowing that an ambulance would perhaps go unnoticed for a little longer than any other vehicle so they tried to enter through a first checkpoint and they were stopped they changed the route and tried to uh, reach from another route they were again stopped but little it mattered to them because remember this attack was not against a specific target was not against a specific embassy or a military out outpost this was an attack which was meant to target and kill civilians. This is terrorism in its purest form. This is meant to terrify, to scare the population of, of Afghanistan, telling them, look, as long as this government is in place, as long as the United States have their boots on the ground in Afghanistan, you all need to be afraid. All right, uh, Dr. Well Awad, I'll take off from where Daniele left uh, left us. This is clearly a change in strategy. This is not a security establishment that was attacked. It was a place that was teeming with the civilian population out on a Saturday, like most of us are, um, at about 12 in the afternoon. Why choose this uh, sort of uh, way of reaching out to uh, the United States or Afghanistan? Is it because they feel that, uh, you know, the U.S. is saying that it's changing its strategy, um, that it is going to look at different ways of handling uh, the Taliban and other insurgents in Afghanistan? But uh, the Taliban says that no change in strategy is going to make them any weaker. Who is this message for and why is it taking place repeatedly in Kabul? Well, I think the uh, situation in uh, Afghanistan as a whole become more complex and it's difficult to predict who has done this operation and who is acting in Afghanistan, whether it is the great power games again or it is the local or it is across the border. So it is a very complex really to reach to any conclusion. 
Having said that, I would say that also that the the presence of the American troops in Afghanistan have reduced, as you remember, that since the combat forces left three years ago, there was a major attack on the civilians. And in fact, the, the number of casualties among civilians in Afghanistan have raised sharply in the last three years, according to, uh, to uh, sources. So we can see that the target now become more of a soft target, more of a popular uh, populous area in Afghanistan has been attacked repeatedly. And in fact, this is a very heinous crime, choosing the timing of it. Uh, and also, it's a more popular area where it has been targeted, despite the fact that we, the, it's an area which is very secure, highly secured. And it is also uh, housing the, uh, the uh, sensitive uh, ministries and intelligence department and the embassies and the officials of the foreign mission sitting there. So I think there is a message on these bombing going on in Afghanistan that the, the national security of Afghanistan is failing to meet the expectation why the Americans were saying that they have moved their combat forces along with ISAF, which have removed more than 100,000 soldiers, and now they are only left with less than 12,000 people. And they are only uh, keeping the advisors and the experts to deal with the situation there, which is uh, not possible to combat a very influenced groups that they are acting on the ground, whether it's Haqqani network, whether it is the Taliban, whether it is the ISIS, and name it, and everybody is uh, doing jo job. In fact, even some intelligence uh, uh, agencies are also inciting the, the, the sectarian violence in Afghanistan to their own advantage. So I don't see any clear agenda of these great powers really in Afghanistan. At the end of the day, it's only the Afghani who is paying the price. Absolutely. And the visuals are just horrific, uh, difficult to consume what we're seeing coming out of Kabul. I request both of you to stay with me a while longer. Um, remember, this is uh, another terror attack that's rocked Kabul uh, just this month. It's killed as many as 95. Reactions have come in from various countries and individuals. India, among the first nations uh, to condemn the attack. It released a state saying, quote, India strongly condemns the barbaric and dastardly terrorist attack in Kabul today that targeted innocent civilians and the wounded under treatment. This follows the cowardly terror attack on the children and civilians in Jalalabad on 24th of January. There can be no justification for such reprehensible attacks. The perpetrators of these attacks and their supporters should be brought to justice. End quote. The United Kingdom's ambassador to Kabul, Nick Hay, has also reacted on Twitter saying, quote, I condemn in strongest possible terms today's atrocity in Kabul. All responsible must be brought to justice. UK and Afghanistan grieves with those lost and injured. Search for peace must continue. End quote. The Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs in Britain, Boris Johnson, also tweeted saying, and I quote again, appalled by explosion in Kabul today, third serious attack in Afghanistan in one week. The Afghan people deserve peace. End quote. The U.S. has reacted with its envoy to Kabul, John Bass, tweeting, saying, quote, I condemn today's senseless and cowardly bombing in Kabul and those who perpetrated it. Our thoughts are with the victims and their families. End quote. Meanwhile, the Secretary General of NATO, Jens Stoltenberg, tweeted, saying, quote, Appalled by the barbaric attack in Kabul, I strongly condemn this terrorist act. My thoughts are with the victims, their families and the Afghan people. NATO stands with Afghanistan in our common fight against terrorism, end quote. Daniele, these are obviously noble thoughts, noble words coming from a variety of quarters, but... Uh, if you ask me, they seem to ring a little hollow uh, given what's happening in Afghanistan, what's happened repeatedly in the country for the last 16 years at least. Who exactly does Afghanistan rely on in its fight against these extremist uh, you know, uh, outfits within uh, the country when its own neighborhood is producing and supporting terrorist organizations? Well, I am afraid that I have to say that uh, Afghanistan has uh, no ally in this battle. In fact, uh, if we are to take a very brief uh, timeline of what happened since uh, May 2017, in May 31st of May 2017, 
More than 130 people died in a suicide blast. A water tanker filled with explosive exploded close to the German embassy. Then the funeral for the victims of that attack was against attacked. Then in June again. Then in December against the Shia center in the city of Kabul was attacked. More than 50 people died. Then the Intercontinental Hotel was attacked a few days back. Then today this is happening and we are talking only about Kabul because remember that Afghanistan is big and attacks have been happening in Herat, in Kandahar, in Kunduz, in Jalalabad, in Nangarhar province, everywhere. The US military is not turning out to be helpful when it comes to internal security. So Afghanistan is very much on its own in this battle. Russia also is not helpful. We had reports of Russia even helping indirectly the Taliban in the northern part of Afghanistan in order to convince the Taliban to attack the Islamic State because Russia is very much worried about the Islamic State. So there is a great game once again in Afghanistan where all major powers are pursuing their own agenda and the uh, United States of America and the NATO coalition unfortunately are not helping Afghanistan to become a safer place. In fact, uh, Afghanistan is uh, way less safe than it was years back before the American uh, incursion. So. To answer to your question, Afghanistan is left alone and Pakistan obviously is not helping them. Absolutely. Intelligence agencies in Pakistan are not tackling enough the organization currently active within the tribal belt on the border between Afghanistan and Pakistan. Absolutely. And uh, uh, Dr. Awad, that is something that uh, an official from the Afghan government has communicated to us at Weon as well. He says it's uh, categorically that uh, it is Pakistan-based terror groups that are carrying out these attacks in Afghanistan. He named the Haqqani Network. Um, the U.S., of course, has already uh, tried to send out a strong message to Pakistan about support and uh, succor for uh, terrorist uh, organizations on its soil. But does it have to go beyond just these sort of warnings uh, and really into something that means something to Pakistan and what do we do about the China factor because even if the US isolates Pakistan to a degree China refuses to do so well I think uh, Pakistan does share part of the blame on the guacamire in Afghanistan for sure um, but I would also say uh, let me play the devil advocate here that Pakistan also paid the price for the uh, terror attack in its own uh, game because who who cooked the poison is testing it and they're testing the the the, the po same poison they have made uh, made them uh, make it along with the ISI and the CIA uh, and the Saudis intelligence during the creation of Al Qaeda in Afghanistan to defeat the USSR and they left these elements within of Pakistan and Afghanistan in the tribal belt where they have nourished when there is a troops, when there are movement from neighboring country, from Tajikistan, from Uzbekistan, from China, from the Arab world, where remaining are getting, still getting good training in those areas. And I think the selectivity of the American uh, by targeting only the Haqqani groups as a counter-terrorism measure does not satisfy or that's not sufficient measure to defeat terrorism. You cannot be selective in terrorism. In fact, whoever kills civilian is a terrorist. Therefore, all these groups in Afghanistan who is targeting that civilian are should be countered, should be uh, eliminated, should be brought to justice. And if you only attack those groups which is attacking only the Afghani government and the American troops, that is not uh, fighting terrorism. That, I mean, I would want to say here that Pakistan, yes, it's paying its price, is trying to deal with the issues. American putting the blame again on Pakistan when themselves they have threatened Pakistan with dire consequences that if you don't allow us to invade Afghanistan and you don't help us, we will bomb you as well. So right. I think there is a, a great game here playing. Look at the whole bombing from Afghanistan to Iran, to Syria, to Iraq, to, uh, to the, all the Silk Route is uh, being attacked and that is also if we look at it from the wider perspective we can bring back china and also united states and russia into this war and india not to uh, not to be isolated on this because india is also a, a victim of terrorism from the neighboring countries so therefore we need the, the regional players to sit down across the table and decide the future of afghanistan decide the stability in this part of the world because everybody will be affected terror knows no border
Absolutely. And terror, uh, it, it's clear, just going by what's going on, uh, you know, there's no faith. These people act, uh, you know, as mercenaries. There is absolutely nothing that can be associated with any faith when it comes to these kind of dastardly attacks. Uh, Daniele, uh, the United States says it's, uh, you know, readying to send more forces to Afghanistan um, in May of this year. Do you think attacks such as these is possibly going to change the U.S. strategy um, on Afghanistan? Or do you think it's resolute? in terms of uh, it doesn't want more of its soldiers, uh, you know, open to these kind of attacks in Afghanistan. Well, Aisha, just to quote a simple number, if the United States of America were not able to defeat the Afghan Taliban when they had a nearly 100,000 soldiers on the ground in Afghanistan, I doubt that adding a few thousand troops will solve the problem. Truth is that Afghanistan is very much a large rural country and Taliban have a presence at least in 50% of the country. The strategy needs to change and also you cannot demand the Afghan National Army to keep fighting. The Afghan National Army is made of brave soldiers but is a wounded and tired and injured body who has been fighting now for years. Unfortunately, I only think that the only way out to this mess is either to find a third country willing to mediate and to pitch in very heavily in the Afghan scenario, but this is very risky, or to try to sit down with the Taliban to settle down and to find out a common way to stop this terrible violence which is at the end of the day hurting the um, the local the civilian population in Afghanistan but I am afraid that as of now the Taliban have no intention whatsoever to sit down at the negotiating table because when you are winning when you are on the upper hand of a war you have no interest in negotiating and the, if if the government of Afghanistan is trying to act very confidently and trying to convince them to sit down to find mediation, well, I am afraid that they will not succeed in that. So this is the major problem. Even the Afghan police, you cannot ask local brave young people to keep dying and to keep losing ground on a daily basis in a country like Afghanistan, which has been at war for decades now. If you, have, if you are 40 years old in Afghanistan, you've never seen peace. Imagine that. That's a, that's a hard-hitting fact, uh, Daniele. Dr. Awad, you know, some of the people we spoke with from Afghanistan shortly after news broke of this explosion, uh, many of them said that this is a security failure. And immediately the questions that were asked were about the government. And uh, in many ways, these attacks are serving uh, the purpose of shaking the civilian population's faith in uh, the, the ruling government. Well, according to uh, the former uh, president of Afghanistan, uh, Karzai, Hamid Karzai, when we met him, he put uh, squarely the blame on the United States for a corrupted government in Afghanistan, despite the fact that he himself was corrupted as well and, and, a, and a government was supported by the United States. So having said that, I would say that the intelligent apparatus and the security and also the army has been infiltrated by, uh, by many uh, agencies which is trying to take full advantage. Trust me, if we, we do more investigation into this kind of uh, stereotype of attacks that have happened in Afghanistan, it's similar to what happened at, during the American uh, occupation of Iraq where Bremer was there and $10 billion was lost when payment was made to both sides to have a sectarian violence. The worries for me, I think, for the future is that we are seeing emergence of IS in Afghanistan, seeing re-emergence of, of the Al-Qaeda, seeing more violence in the region, and this, this integration of Afghanistan is much more on the card for the ne near future. All right. Stay with me, uh, gentlemen, for a while longer. I'm also joined on the broadcast right now by Mushtaq Rahim. He's an independent analyst uh, joining us from Kabul. Uh, Mushtaq, good evening. Thank you for speaking with us. Uh, this is uh, the third such blast in recent weeks in Kabul itself. What do you think it says about uh, the Taliban's resurgence in Afghanistan? Mushtaq, if you can hear me, I uh, was wondering what you uh, have to say about the resurgence of uh, the Taliban in Afghanistan, uh, given that this is the third type uh, or rather blast that uh, Kabul has seen in just the last couple of weeks. 
you know what uh, different uh, aspects uh, have a connection with all this e e exponential surge in taliban attacks first and foremost they have been under pressure from the military forces here in afghanistan throughout 2017 where they have not been able to achieve their military targets secondly the international community's pressure where the united nations security council visited afghanistan recently as well as the united uh, united states strategy for south asia these all have been creating pressure on the taliban as well as on their backers that is uh, pakistan uh, believed to be pakistan so they, in in such a scenario they are in a, in a they are trying to break the shackles and at least Uh, stamp their authority on the given situation because they have not been able to achieve their military targets last year and through such, such attacks they are trying to give a sense that they remain in control of the uh, the, uh, the fighting and ongoing uh, war with the uh, Afghan government and international forces right and i asked uh, my colleague this question already but i want to ask you what you think about uh, the us uh, mushtaq sending 1000 more forces to afghanistan by may do you think in some ways the taliban is trying to send out a message to the united states and uh, could this attack really speaking make a difference to the entire strategy well yes uh, from the message perspective you can say that they are trying to send a message to to the world not only in the wake of uh, the us deployments but also because of uh, the situation they have been facing since last 3 years after 2014s uh, 14 where the international forces forces drew down from afghanistan taliban thought that they will challenge the government rate and afghan forces but the afghan forces have been able to push them back and keep them at bay now that they have not been able to achieve their military targets on the battlefield they've been trying the bigger cities in order to Uh, in order to send a message that they remain in control and secondly of course they're trying to uh, to give a sense that uh, they remain uh, uh, they, they they continue uh, they will continue fighting the international forces and national forces and and they they are trying to send messages to the political capitals as well as the uh, military decision makers that they remain prepared for the uh, fighting in afghanistan All right, stay with me, Mushtaq. Uh, Doctor Avad, a quick follow-up question on that. You know, uh, even when it comes to India and terrorist attacks uh, that take place in sensitive areas like Jammu and Kashmir, the immediate question that's asked always is about local support networks that these terror groups have, and of course, the proliferation of extremist ideology. Do you think that when the strategy is being re-looked at, um, considering what's happened so far hasn't really worked at all, that extremist ideology, the the propagation of uh, you know this. Uh, extreme type of uh, islam is something that needs to be taken up on a war footing if any of these strikes are expected to come to an end well i think you are uh, absolutely right we need to put an end aisha to the uh, ideology as long as the ideology does exist then we have a problem because people go die and more, more more people will be joining we need to de destroy the infrastructure of this terror organization as well and also we need to defeat the ideology where there is funding coming from and who has been supporting those extremist view whether it is the wahhabi movement whether it's the salafist movement all this has been on the card but i think what is more important for me to see Uh, from this kind of uh, attack there there is a sympathizer among the public in fact if there is no shelter to terrorists there will be no no action because this terror are among us they're walking unless we they blow up themselves we don't know they were prepared for this kind of a movement that's why it is very difficult for any government to detect terrorists like but it is easy to if the local support and have faith in their government the problem in afghanistan the government does not have the popular support because of their it is still considered as a minority government the taliban despite the fact that they have been defeated in many area they still control more than 55% of afghanistan therefore we need to know that they are forced to reckon with they need to to be reconciling with the afghani population they should be also the international community recognize that there should be a national government within the constitution of afghanistan that they should be taken in the fact of the matter is we don't know really what is the strategy of the united states in afghanistan does we have the blueprint at what's going on in the area no do we have to keep the people dying of afghanistan paying the price for such kind of a foreign or a wrong doing in afghanistan 
Why that the first place they went to defeat the Taliban Al Qaeda? Now they are out. They are still coming with a small number only for selective target and tactical ac action. Yet they are unable to do it. So the right. Afghan people has to stand together. If it is left for the Afghani people without uh, original intervention, I am sure the Afghani will be able to solve their problem. Fair enough. In fact, it's not just uh, us who aren't very certain of what the U.S.'s endgame in Afghanistan is. I think uh, the U.S. itself seems to be confused on what its uh, aims are in Afghanistan and the South Asia region. We leave it at that, gentlemen. Daniel Pagani, Dr. Well Awad, and of course, uh, uh, Mushtaq Rahim. Thank you all uh, three for joining us this evening and sharing your perspective with us on that horrific story coming out of Afghanistan. We'll keep track of it, of course. <laughs>